Welcome to our Culture Gaming, I'm Scott and I just wanted to talk about how much I love video games through the lens of like philosophy and psychology and all the different ways that a game can put you slap bang in the middle of all sorts of different situations. Now obviously we see, you know, high octane action sequences and plot twists and things that make memorable video game stories memorable. But every now and then a game might put you in a situation where the thematics or the narrative or just the way that the world is laid out, it isn't as black and white as it maybe is in the vast majority of titles. Some of the best written video game stories are the ones that stay with you, not necessarily because someone stabbed you in the back or you executed a character as they were fishing next to a river or whatever, but the ones that set up these sort of scenarios that are just worth talking about in groups, are worth putting out there to thousands of people and just seeing what they did in those given moments. Maybe you've been down one of these paths and you chose something and you hated living with the consequences of what happened. Well, you'll figure out what I'm getting at the more I start to break these things down. I'm Scott from Orculture.com and these are eight video games with questions you won't want to answer. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number eight, is your family more important than someone else's? Papers, please. I think Papers, Please is a game that literally everybody should play just for the sake of, especially right now, there's all sorts of conversations going on around immigration and the, the different processes of immigration and when is it acceptable or when, you know, like it's everywhere in the Western world right now. And Papers, Please kind of shines a light on that in a way that no other game ever has. It literally puts you in the position of someone at the border control deciding who's allowed into the glorious nation of Ostotska. And that means that in gameplay terms, you're deciding whether or not you're going to let people through, meaning that you're your score is going to go higher, you're going to have access to food, and you're not going to get punished for getting things wrong. But the counter to that is that the situations you're presented with are nearly always heartbreaking. One of the most poignant early examples is you come across a couple where, um, say you're stamping papers and this guy goes through the queue and the man says, you know, my wife's just behind me. She's a few steps back. Can you just make sure that she gets through as well? Further on down the line, the wife turns up and her papers aren't in order. So on the one hand, you're splitting up a husband and wife, but on the other, you're doing your job. And right there and then, Papers, Please starts to unfold. It starts to show you the way that morals can go out the window. You need to do your job well to make sure that you have the money to get the resources such as food and medicine for your own family. I mean, you might have like a relative that's dying or something like that, but you know that by doing this, you're gonna go on the wrong side of the people of your bosses and the people that are telling you what to do. And that's only in the first sort of hour or so of the game. Everything starts to get way more intense from there. And uh, to not spoil too much, there is a point where you're actually given a firearm, you're given a gun and told, look, if anyone makes a break for the border, take them out. Now, you don't have to. You don't have to take this person out. But too many strikes against your name in the eyes of your bosses and your higher ups means the you know, game over because you're not doing your job. How much can you divorce your job from your morals is what the game basically asks you. Number seven, could you steal, maybe kill, to stay alive? This war of mine. Now this game's inspired by the 1992 to 1996 Siege of Sarajevo. And developer 11-bit's depiction of civilians struggling to rebuild and get by in any war-torn province is genuinely eye-opening. I say inspired by because you can pretty much tag this on to the end of any more overblown militaristic scenario, whether that be a Call of Duty or any movie where there's a lot of collateral damage. This game basically says, hey, look, people have to live here. People have to rebuild. And you're cast as one of these people just trying to do what's necessary to get by. Essentially a survival game with light stealth elements, it's on you to figure out how you're going to get through the day and the night. Rubble will need clearing, food needs cooking, and general mental states need maintaining. But at night, you get the choice to venture out into the city. And it's here where things can get very dark indeed. Hospitals are sure to have medical supplies, but they'll also be populated. The same goes for shopping malls and churches for both provisions and even weapons, but there are some residential areas to pilfer too. An elderly couple, a family, the DLC for this actually added children to the mix, although thankfully they can't die I mean I didn't need my mind broken anymore but the idea of going into someone else's house and taking what they have just so that you and yours can get by that's a hell of a, a preposition and the game lets you totally live that out if you want to go into the elderly couple's house and go up the stairs and you'll hear them say oh my god someone's in our house um, you know and maybe you want to go further than that maybe you want to kill them Maybe you want to do all those things. You'll have to live with that and your characters have to live with that too, which means that their sanity is affected by it. There's 
Hardly anything is as completely soul crushing as realizing that your own characters can't take it anymore. Like, for the most part, a lot of us play video games and we just we assume that our characters can get through things. We assume that we can kill people or we can steal things or whatever it is. And this game says, no, your characters are going to remember all of these things. And sometimes your characters, your supposed heroes, can end up hanging themselves or killing themselves or starving themselves. The more desperate or somewhat villainous you play, the more your characters will feel the effects, even committing suicide if they feel that the ends don't justify the means. Number six, is your want greater than the needs of the many? The Last of Us. Similar to Papers, Please, but more on an individual basis without the element of choice, The Last of Us forces you to embody a character that actively slaughters a population-saving surgeon to reclaim his surrogate daughter. Now, I kind of think that this is a bit of a genius move. Too often are we given the choice to do the good thing or the bad thing. Naughty Dog had the stones, the cojones, the balls, the gusto to put you in the brain of a character who's doing a very specific thing. If you walk up close to the first surgeon when you enter the room that Ellie's in, Joel will literally just cut his throat with a scalpel. And then it's up to you whether you wanna go further and kill the other two people. But the point is, this is what Joel's gonna go forward with. And you as the player, as the viewer, as the audience have to live with that. You have to be proposed that question. Would you do this? Can you see yourself empathizing with this action or sympathizing with this action and how does that make you feel are your needs greater than the needs of the many joel in doing this is pretty actively dooming the entire populace he's been told that ellie harbors the cure to all mankind but he says no she's gonna have to die for that to go through and i'm not gonna do it Imagine if your partner, child, parent, etc. was the key to humanity's salvation. And even before you could say goodbye, you're given the news of never seeing them again. Does the wider world's thanks comfort your loss, or is that person irreplaceable to the point of taking action? Number five, how far would you go to save your child? Heavy rain. Flawed in the script and voice department it may be, but Heavy Rain's portrayal of Father Ethan going through hell to save his son is a mighty enjoyable, semi-relatable tale. I mean, I've not been trapped in any electric conduit factories, but I imagine that it's not the best time in the world to be having. At any point in the game, you are free to walk away. The game just kind of says like, hey, here's this horrible thing you're gonna have to do for the sake of saving your in-game child. But if you think that Ethan would walk away or you're not prepared to go through things like removing a finger or trying to clamber through some, like I said, electric wire that are gonna kill you, then you can walk away and the game accounts for that. It gives you a different ending. That also impacts the way that other characters' stories play out, also impacting the ultimate ending as well. Say what you like about David Cage. I say a hell of a lot and it's nearly always negative, but at least in Heavy Rain, he made us really feel for this guy that was going through our horrible journey and what we were prepared to do alongside. Number four, your job or your friend, a way out. Spoilers for a way out. It's very good and I recommend playing it, but spoilers, for now, because this is one of the biggest twists in A Way Out. So A Way Out forces you to play the whole thing in split-screen co-op. And if you do so in person with someone like a partner or a best friend, that bond starts to take on a whole life of its own. All of which is why, when character Vincent is revealed to be a cop looking to bring Leo in after working together to kill a mob boss, it shatters everything, setting up a final third where both heroes are on opposite sides of the thin blue line. Now, for me, I was playing this with my fiance, which is like one of the best things you could do. Play with someone that you think you know inside out, because all of a sudden you get given this revelation and you're like, hey, well, you wouldn't kill me, would you? We're supposed to try and get through this together. But maybe that person is thinking, hey, you wouldn't kill me either, right? But maybe I'm going to get the drop on you first. And maybe that's just how we're going to play this thing out. By pitting both players against each other after hours and hours of working together, it's one hell of a setup, especially when the right thing is reinforced by the state or morality or whatever. One of you is playing as a police officer trying to bring in a criminal. So that is the right thing to do. But whether you and your partner can agree on that in real life or in the game, is a whole matter entirely. We can extrapolate this into everyday situations too. In any given moment of choice, be it career orientated or anywhere else, do you go with what will make you happy or can you obey with what's being asked? Number three, could you kill a child as the right thing to do? The Walking Dead. Oh, we're getting grim. Uh, video games, yeah, not many other mediums can literally ask you to kill a child. Although the way that The Walking Dead does it, does set you up with enough reason to do it, being that you're literally watching the humanity drain out of the small boy called Duck for a good five, 10, 15 minutes. The more every second ticks by, the more you hear his breathing get weaker. And the more you realize that you're going to lose him to zombification. He's not gonna be the person that he was before. And maybe it's just better for him if you put him out of his misery. A lot of people couldn't do this, completely warranted. I mean, the game tots up a whole bunch of percentages towards the end of each chapter, which tells you what people did and what people didn't. Maybe you could, maybe you couldn't. 
Maybe you don't know if it's the right thing or not. I don't know if I do. A staple of zombie fiction is analyzing humanity by comparing it to the slovenly hordes being for brains, though by creating this juxtaposition, the notion of I know I'm not them, where does it end? 2013's The Walking Dead passed this out through childlike innocence in a world gone south. At many opportunities, you're given the option to shield 10-year-old Kenny Duck Jr. from the realities of the zombie apocalypse, even playing with him or talking about anything other than death whenever possible. Then he gets bitten, and everyone knows what has to happen next. Short of making some comment on what to do with a catatonically ill patient if they're trapped in their own body, it's deemed best to put Duck out of his misery before he fully turns, though the parents have an understandably hard time doing so. At this point, you can step in if you want to, but is it what's right for the child, the parents, or those around you? The game puts the weapon in your hands and says, figure it out. Number two, would you die for your country? Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Said to be Hideo Kojima's best written Metal Gear in the whole bunch, and I can't really argue with that, the final twist sets up all sorts of extrapolations on what it means to die for your country, what it means to be a true patriot, and how far duty goes before your own humanity has to enter in. Snake Eater's tale of a turncoat soldier revealed to actually be undercover the whole time is a solid foundation for an extrapolation of patriotism and duty. Where a way out asks you to make a choice, Snake Eater unfills an entire setup where character the boss is forced to take the blame for a rogue nuclear detonation. After initially being sent to deliver the warheads in the first place, only to then die by the hand of player character Snake so that America's government could save face. The ultimate fulfillment of enlisting and dying for your country, Kojima plays it out through the mentored relationship between Boss and Naked Snake. So finding out that we have to step up and take out our mentor, the character who's been helping us through this whole thing, is just as impactful for us the player as it is Snake the person. Most gut-wrenching of all is seeing Snake salute the boss's grave at the end, knowing that only he knows the truth of the whole thing, alongside the player who's watched it all unfold step by step. The only other people that know about the truth of what happened are the ones at the top of the pyramid, the ones that get to sign off on all sorts of decisions, not really feeling the ramifications or the, the human or moral strain on what went down, rather like the many individual real-world war stories that contribute to you being able to watch this video today. And number one, do you trust humanity not to repeat the mistakes of the past? Horizon Zero Dawn. Massive, overblown, huge spoilers for Horizon Zero Dawn. This thing is absolutely just the coolest thing, but it's the biggest spoiler in the game. And, you know, run for cover if you don't want to know. So Horizon's final few twists established that upon receiving the knowledge that humanity was doomed to a viral robot-caused apocalypse, Faro Automated Solutions, Ted Faro, put together Operation Enduring Victory. It was a way to archive all of humanity's knowledge at the time, a way to provide some sort of capsule that a future version of humanity could go back into, could reaccess, and just know where we came from, what went wrong, and how to learn from the mistakes of the past. Near the end of the game though, Ted Farrow has a monumental change of heart. He decides to actually wipe out all the archives relating to humanity's history, meaning that whoever comes in the future, all the test tube babies and all the different versions of humanity that are going to come in the future, don't have anything to fall back on. His reasoning is that if they see what we did in the past, they might replicate it, which is one hell of a question to put out there. Would you leave behind footage and plans of nuclear weapons or the Agent Orange gas, for example, hoping that people would learn to never replicate such things, or have you just provided the means to do so? Basically, do you trust humanity? Do you trust yourself not to replicate the mistakes of the past, even if the information is right there to go from. 